All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking about what happens when you have a weak base solution. We have 20 mils of 0.25 molar pyridine, and it's been titrated with 60 mils of 0.1 molar strong acid hydrochloric acid. So just so you know, this is what pyridine looks like. It's an organic base. At every one of these vertexes, there's a carbon atom, and that carbon atom has enough hydrogens coming off of it to satisfy its octet. So this is just an organic shorthand way of drawing um, compounds. So this is what pyridine looks like. Throughout the course of the video, I'm going to be just calling it R3N. I'm going to make it just much, much more generic. So R3N is what pyridine is. Pyridine is a weak base. The reason I know it's a base is because it's got this lone pair of electrons that can co and uh, get protons off of acids. Also, there are no protons in this that it can be donating away. So R3N is a weak base. We're going to be titrating it with strong acid HCl. So first we need to determine, are we before the equivalence point, after the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, we need to figure out where we're at in this titration curve. Now whenever you have a strong acid or a strong base that's being added to something else, it is a reaction. It is not equilibrium. So because we have a reaction, we're going to need an IC final table. And the IC final table is really talking about the number of moles, the stoichiometry of the reaction. So first, let's determine how many moles of each we have. So we have 20 mils of a 0.25 molar pyridine solution. So 20 milliliters. For every 1,000 milliliters, there's a liter. And the molarity tells me that for every 1 liter, there's 0.25 moles of pyridine. So during the course of this reaction, we have 0.005 moles of pyridine. Now let's determine how many moles of the acid we have. We have 60 milliliters. There's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And every liter contains 0.1 moles of HCl. That's what the molarity is telling us. So that means we have 0.006 moles of HCl. So now you can tell kind of where you are during the course of the titration. You have excess HCl. You are past the equivalence point because you have added more moles of acid than you had moles of base. So let's see how that impacts our pH. Like I said, we need an IC final table. So let's predict the products of this reaction. So what happens when weak base pyridine reacts with strong acid HCl? It's a reaction on equilibrium. The base pulls a proton off of the acid. That leaves us with R3NH plus, conjugate acid of R3N, and chloride ion. All right, so initially, our initial number of moles of the base, 0.005. And our initial number of moles of the HCl is 0.006. We have no moles of the R3NH. And I'm going to just ignore chloride. Chloride is um, one of those ions that does not affect the pH at all. Uh, it's kind of a spectator, just kind of hangs out during the course of the reaction. So I don't really care what's going on with it. Now, looking at the change for an IC final table for a reaction, you want to see which one of these is the limiting reagent and which one is in excess. R3N is the limiting reagent because we have less of it than we have of the HCl. So that means during the course of the reaction, all of pyridine is going to be used up. 0.005 moles of HCl is going to be used up. And we're going to gain 0.05 moles of the R3NH. After the reaction has come to completion, we have no base left over. We have 0.001 moles of HCl and 0.005 moles of uh, R3NH. Let's talk about the final molarity. And remember that molarity is moles per liter. We have number of moles. So we need to determine how many liters of the solution we have. So we took 20 milliliters plus 60 milliliters, giving us a total of 80 milliliters of solution, which means that we have 0.08 liters of the solution. So to get the final molarity, we're going to divide both of these by 0.08 liters. So the final molarity of HCl, 0.0125 molar. And the final molarity of the R3NH, 
is 0 0.0625 molar. Now let's determine, do we have an acid? Do we have a base? Do we have a buffer? First, let me tell you, we do not have a buffer. We, a buffer is made up of a conjugate acid-base pair. So the conjugate acid-base pair that we would have here is R3NH and R3N. We have no R3N. This is not a buffer. What it is, though, we have 0.0125 molar of strong acid HCl. Even though we have some of this acid as well, and even though we have more of it, it's a higher concentration, it doesn't really matter because it is weak. We have a concentration of a strong acid. That means that this solution will be acidic. So, when you have strong acid, HCl, when it reacts with water, remember it's a reaction because we have strong acid HCl, you produce hydronium ion. All of the HCl becomes hydronium because it's a reaction. The equilibrium lies so far to the right that we can call it a reaction. So that means that our concentration of HCl is equal to our concentration of hydronium ion. So because our concentration of hydronium ion therefore is 0.0125, we can get our pH directly. The pH is the negative log of the hydronium. So the pH is the negative log of 0.0125, and that gives you a pH of 1.9. So whenever you have a strong acid present, it's going to govern the pH because the strong acids ionize completely to hydronium. You can get the pH directly from the hydronium ion concentration.